Call it a rip-off, call it yet another Souls-like, call it what you will. Lords of the Fallen has landed, and amongst the barrage of Souls-likes we're treated to year on year, Hexworks video game surely sits along lies of P as 2023's most promising effort to be moulded out of From Software's long-established blueprints that isn't, you know, developed by the Japanese studio itself. Set in a dark world, Lords of the Fallen 2023 is a blistering take on the Souls-like formula, with punishing third-person action, emphasising surgically precise combat and immersive exploration through a sophisticated world, with a dynamic PvPvE element allowing players to summon fellow travellers to assist in taking down particularly arduous opponents, or alternatively, they'll invade your session to stifle your progress. It's a combination of ingredients that'll please Souls-like veterans and newcomers to the genre alike, and whilst, yes, Lords of the Fallen, and indeed Lies of P, are imitations of the Dark Souls formula, they're the closest approximations yet. Perhaps it's time to concoct a new genre, one that shifts titles like Lords of the Fallen away from mere Dark Souls clones to something more akin to copied homework, but with enough originality sprinkled in to make it seem like your own idea. Principal in Lords of the Fallen's original ideas is the Umbral Lamp, a device used to travel from the Axiom, that is, the world of the living, and the Umbral, which is the world of the dead. You see, the world of the living has a realistic, albeit gloomy, overcast aesthetic. It's one of castles, monasteries, knights, and chivalry, stylized to provoke a tormented ideal. In the realm of the dead, these dark fantasy elements spill onto the surface. The gates of hell are truly opened, with vistas of cosmic horror stalked by horrendous creatures. Transporting to the Umbral can be done manually with the lamp, but it's also visited every time the player dies. Twisting the world into a nightmarish vision, dense with fog and spiny biohorror growth with walkways hidden in day view suddenly revealed, presenting new opportunities for exploration. After death, players must forge through the Umbral to revive at location-specific totems. Every entry into the Umbral is a chance to grind for Umbral scouring, but visits become increasingly challenging with the pursuit of harder enemies making return trips to the dark side erratic and intense. It's clear Hexworks and publisher CI Games understand that spellbinding world design is key to crafting a memorable Dark Souls experience. Indeed, the art direction that accompanies the engaging gameplay makes the game much more intriguing. Despite Mornstead's wealth of medieval and gothic architecture being a well-trodden trope of Souls-like games, it's the art direction's attention to detail that makes the overall experience really shine. And whilst, yes, we're seeing macabre gothic world design for the millionth time, the fact Lords of the Fallen's Mornstead is so immediately familiar means that we can appreciate the graphic prowess of this title. It's a marker for how good things can look on current generation hardware. Developed in Unreal Engine 5, the most immediately apparent benefit of Epic's latest 3D creation tool is in Lords of the Fallen's lighting. UE5's global illumination and real-time lighting systems do a stellar job of bouncing light realistically off a whole host of surfaces, providing tactile nuance to a variety of materials. Ancient cobblestone and brickwork, the rusted sheen of swords and shields, and battle-scarred cloth and helmets all shimmer realistically, as if crafted from scans of the real thing, which of course, with photogrammetry, another key feature of Unreal Engine 5 is a very real possibility. Read reviews elsewhere of Lords of the Fallen, and a common complaint is the drab grayscale color palette which pervades both the realms of the living and the dead. However, when peeking real-time into Umbral's vision of death, contrasting both the European fantasy of the living with the coldness of the underworld simultaneously, it's remarkable how much more intense the dark world can get. Despite a more visually faded look to an already drab exterior, 
Umbral is intoxicating. Texture reproduction at incredibly high resolutions via Unreal Engine 5's nanite technology is front and center here. Throughout the gloom, visages are incredibly detailed, even at a distance. The other cool thing about Nanite is how it manages the memory processing of all this ultra-high resolution texture. Running two distinct realms simultaneously presumably demands a lot of processing power, but Lords of the Fallen can switch between the two without any visible disturbance whatsoever. Yes, technical and performance issues have been well documented in those reviews too. But Hexworks have worked so hard to patch any glitch post-release, and the game performs really well now as a result. Slick performance is a mainstay of From Software's Earth, so it's critical Lords of the Fallen plays well if it's to compete in the Souls-like big leagues. Its combat would be fruitless with poor performance, but when it's firing on all cylinders, it's an exhilarating experience. There's the usual fare. Light and heavy attacks, parry systems, stamina management, scant healing, and a raft of weapons, both melee and ranged. The best strategy here, though, is with aggression. It pays to be on the front foot with enemies akin to how Bloodborne's combat plays out. Blocking attacks comes at the cost of temporary damage, which can be regained by rebounding, so best to avoid blocking altogether if possible. Dual-wielding weapons is an option in Lords of the Fallen 2, with exciting combos allowing you to attack with two distinct handheld weapons simultaneously. Two weapons equals no shield, of course, another example of attack being the best form of defense in Lords of the Fallen. And another example is Soul Flay, a unique way to abscond the soul from your opponent with the Umbral Lamp, leaving them vulnerable to a barrage of brutal attacks. Within a cramped subgenre, Lords of the Fallen and Lies of P prove that there's still room for other studios to innovate on their own ideas. Lords of the Fallen has proven to be somewhat of a hit, shipping 1 million units in its first 10 days on sale, reaching that figure in a quarter of the time it took the arguably better Souls like game Lies of P. Publisher CI Games is speaking of this being the first of many AAA outings for them. With the success of Lords of the Fallen as a perfectly acceptable Dark Souls substitute, the future looks bright, or bleak, depending on the realm you're in, for more Souls-like titles at From Software's level. So what are your thoughts on this? Go ahead and share them in the comments below. And if you like this video, please subscribe to the channel and enable all notifications by clicking the bell icon to get new video updates. We upload every day and would really appreciate your support. Thanks for watching.